Welcome, ORM employees, to another edition of Outlook Training by me, Roger Dunn, in the Information Technology Division of the City Manager's Office. Today's training is going to be on searching. Um, over time, our inboxes and our calendars and our sent items and our deleted items get bigger and bigger and it's harder and harder to find stuff. Well, that's what searching comes in. So I'm going to show you uh, lots of examples and hopefully they're enough to get you uh, comfortable and ready for searching. In Outlook Desktop 2013 and in other versions, the search box is directly above the mailbox. So you click in there to begin a search. For my first example, I'm going to search for the word Bond. That's as in James Bond, right? Well, with an extension like 7005, which is 5007 backwards, I figured it was relevant. So, in my inbox, you'll see that I have several items that were returned. And wherever it finds a match, it highlights it in yellow. That is customizable as well. Um, in, in these emails, Bond is in the subject. But in other emails, Bond is in the message. Now, what about this project update email? It's not yellow in the subject, and it's not yellow in the message body. However, if I were to open project list, you would see that Bond is in there. I tried it a few minutes ago, and Excel wasn't operating correctly, so I'm not going to embarrass myself again that way. So, um, notice that at the bottom, this is pretty common, by the way, um, you'll see this more, or more results possibly on server, something like that. What Outlook has done is searched everything that I have cached on my hard drive, which is about the last year or so. If I click on more, it will search the server and return more results. And this would be a complete list, because you'll notice there is no link at the bottom of these search results. All right. Let's say that I'm not exactly sure what mailbox it's in. Um, as you can see, I have several folders on the left. Maybe the item I'm looking for is in one of those. Or, heaven forbid, it's in deleted items. Or, I want to search my sent items as well. Well, it's an interesting thing when you search your mailbox because it actually is searching your sent items. Remember on this example that was titled Roll of Paper, I didn't send that email to myself. I had sent it to Christy, our department assistant secretary. We, I wanted bond paper, and so bond is, is in the message. But um, I was the one who sent it. It's not in my inbox, although that's what's highlighted. So that's something that you should know, is that when you search your inbox, you're searching your sent items as well. So let's go to um, deleted items. Notice that when I click the folder, my search is gone. Well, if I go and click it and go to recent searches, I'll be able to find it without having to retype it. So that's a nice feature. Let's go back to inbox, click on search, recent searches, bond, and I'll show you another option that's available to you. Over here on the right, it says current mailbox. But I can click that down, and I can say all Outlook items. This will search all calendar appointments, which you can see here is a little person icon with a calendar behind him. It'll search um, all of my subfolders. So notice that this one says that it's in my paperless legal folder. These are in my inbox. You can see these are from my sent items, because it says that above the, above the group and uh, even some tasks that it found with the word bond in them. So that's a very powerful search, and it searches everything related to the, uh, the item. As a matter of fact, if, I eat, even, if I'd even had some contacts with the word bond in them, then it would have found that as well. So pretty powerful. All right. Um, Let's say that I know what I'm looking for is not an email, and it's really in my calendar. If I go do a search, you'll notice that my search results don't come up like a calendar. They come up just like an inbox search, with the subject, the location of the meeting, the start and end times, etc. Um, well, now that I've done my search, how do I get back to the calendar? Clear my search, 
that is definitely one way. Type bond in here again. You can also go back to view and change your view back to a calendar. Well, it cannot display this item. Why? Because I already have a search here. I need to clear the search and then I can go back and you know change my view. Alright. Instead of searching for um, well, Bond actually gave several results, so that's good. Let's go back to my inbox, and I'll show you how to do field-specific searches. Let's say that I remember um, that the title of an email had something to do with sewer. Well, sorting by subject may or may not help me, because sewer may not have been the first word in the subject. But I can tell Outlook that that's the only field I want to search. How do I do that? By typing it. Subject followed by a colon sewer. You'll notice that the results have sewer highlighted in the subject. Now, they may appear in the message body, but it's not required. Because I told it I only wanted those things that where the subject had sewer in it. What if I'm only looking for stuff that's in the message body? Well, that keyword is body, again followed by a colon, and then the word I'm looking for. So, in this email that I'd sent to everybody, remember, I'm searching my mailbox, but it also searches my sent items, I can see that station is highlighted in the message body from that gateway docking station that I had found in my junk pile. There are lots of fields that you can search, all by preceding them with a colon, but the key is knowing what to type. So, let's say that I'm looking for everything from someone named Mark. That returns Mark C. Strand. However, I've also received things from other marks, and they may be in different folders. The next example I'm going to show you is everything from Peter. Notice, however, that not only do I get Peter Wolfley's emails, but also Cliff Peterson and Matt Peterson. Let's suppose that this list was much larger. In fact, I could even try again by clicking on more. Oh, look who pops up now, Amy Peterson. Well, let's say that I really just wanted things from Peter Wolfley. Well, I would just add Wolfley to my search, and that's that. Notice that it caught Peter Wolfley even when his name was last first instead of first last. Another thing that I could have done is I could have said I wanted everything from Peter followed by the capital word not, Peters. That would rule out those last names that begin with Peters, like Peterson and Peterson. But it's important that the not be capitalized, otherwise it's not recognized as a key word. The next thing I'm going to do is search emails that I've sent to people. Now I don't have to have the sent items selected, but I type the word to followed by a colon mark. Notice it shows from, but it doesn't show who the email was to. <laughs> I find that ironic, but if I click on an email, I may find the person in there and it's highlighted just like any keyword. Pretty cool. But let's say that I wanted to make sure that it was to, um, say, Mark Lindsay. So I just type in his word additionally and should find all the stuff that I've sent to him. Great. Close out. Another thing that's a popular search is to search something by date. Now, by default, the email in the inbox is already sorted by date, with the most recent email on the top. The calendar, of course, is easy to search by date, because you just go to that date and see what was going on. But I'm going to show you some other powerful search results that can help you. Uh, being human, we usually don't remember the exact day that things happened, but I'll show you some, show you some samples. So the keyword is received. and the parameters that you can put there are just um, can be English. 
So in this case, I'm showing everything that I've received today. So that was to my mailbox, and this was to everybody. I can also put in a relative date, like yesterday. Or something that I received on Tuesday. Searching by a day of the week is kind of interesting because it doesn't search my entire email box for everything that was received on a Tuesday. Rather, it searches for everything that was received just this past Tuesday. So it's a, it's a pretty relative um, search term. Like, uh, let's say that I want to search today being a Friday. What happens if I type Saturday? Notice that it says we couldn't find what you were looking for. Well, I don't work here on Saturdays. So let's try Thursday. It's going to find everything that was received just yesterday, not the Thursday before. And if I go Monday, again, the most recent Monday. A different thing happens when you're searching for a month if I type January, it does as you would expect and returns everything that was received this month, this January. If I type March, it says that it couldn't find what I was looking for. Even if I click find more on the server, it won't find anything. And I'll tell you why. It's because March was not a recent month. Once March comes closer, then it will be able to find it. Now, I haven't yet figured out what Outlook considers as recent. So, does it consider November recent, even though this is January? No, not recent enough. December, however, was last month, and it should pick it up. <laughs> it didn't. So, be wary about searching for a month name. If I want to search a date range, however, and let's say that I want from December 1st to December 31st, that will be just fine. So 01-12-2014 and 01-2-3-0-2014 and I'm going to put a little hyphen in there. So I've given it a range. I've given it a begin date and an end date. Ha! Actually, that was wrong, wasn't it? December is the 12th month, and this is the first day. There's a proper December search from 12-1-2014 to 12-30-2014. So that little hyphen in there helps limit my results to a date range. You can also use the greater than and less than symbols. So I could say received higher than 6-3-2014 and then use a less than symbol for 6-13-2014. See, all my results are 6-12, 6-11, 6-10, 6-9, down to 6-4. Well, why didn't include 6-3 and 6-13? Well, I didn't use the equal sign. I said strictly greater than uh, June 3rd. If I put the equal sign in there, then June 3rd would be included. However, June 3rd, oh, it was a Tuesday. Awesome. So that's another way to do a date range. Often, people want to find stuff that they've deleted today. Like, when you go to your deleted items, you'll notice that there's a column that's auspiciously missing, and that is date deleted. These dates that show here, today, yesterday, Wednesday, that's the date they were received. Therefore, if I delete something today that I got a long time ago, I would be hard pressed to find it, especially if it was an accident. So here's what you do. Deleted is not a key word, so that actually doesn't find anything that you would think it would find. Rather, you use the word modified. Deleting an item modifies it, and it marks it with the date and time that you did modify it. So if I look for everything that um, I deleted today, and I'm in the deleted items folder, it's going to find everything that was modified today, deleted. Does that make sense? It's like deleting changes it in a certain way, 
but you can't search for when you deleted it, so you have to search for when you modified it. Anyway, not the most obvious thing, but that's what training is for, to bring it to your attention. Much like date searches um, for when you received an item, you can also do date ranges for when you modified an item or deleted it. So if I wanted everything that I um, deleted last week, the first thing I could try is modified last week. See, it's all English, and I can find everything that I, that I uh, deleted between those two dates. Cool. So back to the inbox, back to search. When I click the search bar, I also have this new ribbon that shows up of a lot of other options. Um, I could search for things I've categorized a certain way. I could search for things that are unread in a particular box. Um, if I click the sent to, I can see everything that was sent to me or if I was carbon copied. Um, I can search things that were flagged or that were important. There's just a whole range of things. There's even search tools and an advanced search that you can bring up. Let's see, recent searches, search toolbars, advanced find. This dialog should help you narrow down um, your search results. Anyway, that's how that works, because as humans, we just often forget the full details of items, especially as that inbox grows and grows. Anyway, that's my training for today. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, that you can make the most of it. Remember, you can call me at any time or email me with Outlook questions. Um, and uh, I'll take care of you. See ya.